And as the world continues to monitor events in Egypt in South Sudan, soon to be the world's newest country, historic changes are also underway. VOA's Paul Sisko has more on both situations. In a formal ceremony in Khartoum, the Southern Sudan Referendum Commission said 98.83 percent of voters chose independence during last month's referendum. Former South African President Thabo Mbeki. And the achievement of peace, of democracy and development in northern and southern Sudan promises to help lift the entire continent. Sudan's ability to overcome the formidable obstacles in its path stands as a testament to Africa's capacity to resolve its conflicts and achieve our common goals. Earlier, President Omar al-Bashir reaffirmed his full acceptance of the vote for succession. This is one of the most crucial days for Sudan. We would like to congratulate the people of southern Sudan for the choice they have made. May this crucial event today mark the end of the boundaries between war and peace. The leader of South Sudan, Selva Kiir, cautions in Arabic and English that the January referendum is not the end of the road for North and South, saying that the two regions must build new, strong relations. Without President Bashir and his colleagues in the National Congress Party, we would have not been able you know, to implement this agreement to this stage that we have reached. In the southern capital, Juba, large crowds celebrated the announcement of the results of the independence vote. And today, if I've died, I've left peace behind me and the freedom behind me. Our generation is going to be proud. Not everyone is as conciliatory in Sudan. Clashes between factions within Sudan's military claim more than 50 lives, including several civilians, reportedly brought on by southern soldiers resisting orders to withdraw and redeploy to the north. And in support of those demanding reforms in Egypt, there have been protests in Khartoum, also calling for the removal of the al-Bashir government. Egypt is now more than two weeks into massive uprisings calling for change and new leadership. <laughs> President Mubarak met with his new cabinet Monday and announced plans for new reforms. Omar Suleiman, his newly appointed vice president, met with some opposition leaders and on national television said Mubarak is reviewing constitutional changes and is committed to a peaceful transfer of power. Still not good enough, say thousands of protesters who don't trust promises of reform and want Mubarak out of office now. Makeshift tents have been set up at Cairo's Tahrir Square and the most recent anti-government rallies are the largest so far. The United Nations says more than 300 people have died in protest-related violence. Paul Sisko, VOA News.